Hey, welcome back Design Squad and in this episode of Action Noob to Master Series, I'm gonna show you a different way to do something which I showed you how to do before. And in particular, it's the drop down elements which look custom with let's say icons and some text and something like what you see right now in my sketch mockup. And as you can see, I have for whatever reason, this is a fictitious scenario, I wouldn't probably place it here in, you know, in registration form, but let's see, imagine that the business really needs it to know exactly what users uh, are into and what sort of activities we love to do. And so we're basically asking users to pick a sport. Now you know how many sports and activities there are and hobbies. So it could be, you know, 30, 50, 100 items, you know, it could be a lot of different customized items depending on a, uh, let's say, business case or, 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 you know, different needs or whatever. Um, how what I'm gonna do today, I'm gonna show you how to make this, even though um, an episode of thing 36 or 37 in this playlist, if you haven't seen it, go back. It shows how to do it custom. However, it's not really flexible. What we're gonna do today is use repeater functionality to do the same and to make it much more flexible. So let's say if you wanna add 20 sports uh, to be picked from that dropdown, you can do that now. Uh, you don't have to just remake all the component and all the logic uh, behind the scenes. Without further ado, let me just recreate this mockup in my Axure. As per usual, I'm using Axure plugin and just making it really quick and really simply. And as you can see, I have these fields. Now, the only thing what I'm gonna do in this demo is to make this one clickable. I'm not gonna care about the others or a button. Um, it's up to you if you wanna go that far. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and create a dynamic panel out of this object. So let's say dynamic panel. And as if you remember, we always need to give it a name. So I'm gonna call it, let's say drop down default. Simply as that, pretty cool. And gonna click in and just make two states. One is gonna be, you know, a default state. I like to name my states. And then just gonna make a copy and I'm gonna name it, let's say expanded. So I'm gonna have two states in this dynamic panel, right? And in the second one, that's where I wanna put the repeater. And again, if you don't know about repeaters, I have maybe five, six videos of it. You have to go back, back a little bit from, I think video 50 or so. I kind of try to explain it and try to specify exactly what repeaters are and how to use it. But it's basically a grid of elements which you just need to specify once a template and then you can pull the data in and you know, you can even use spreadsheet data and imagery and stuff and just pre-populate an endless list of items basically, right? So it's awesome. And so I'm gonna go to expand it one and as you can see, it looks the same. All I'm gonna do is just revert my drop down icon, flip it vertically, boom. And now I have this flip. As you can see, it's, there's nothing too interesting here. I'm just maybe I'm gonna expand this element and there's gonna be a caveat here as well because as you're gonna add items with a repeater, it's gonna expand it. However, this object might not expand, but I'll show you a workaround of how you can make it smart and how you can make it awesome basically. And so imagine that this is it. What I'm gonna do next is as usual a flip. So let's say if I'm on this default state, I'm just gonna add a hotspot because that's the easiest option to make it all clickable, all those items gonna add a new interaction on click and I'm gonna set the panel state our drop down into expanded and we can also like just slide it down simply uh, 400 milliseconds is fine and we don't need to animate out simply like that and I'm just gonna copy this hotspot to the next expanded state and just invert the action to to tell us to go back to default and just slide it up. So it's a, in reversal. Um, and if I preview, you're gonna see that I have now the basics of the thing. So if let's say I click, I have some sort of drop down. It doesn't, doesn't look really good. So I might just make it instant. There is a little bit of a delay. So I might just not even do the slide. I might just keep it simple for now. It's up to you to go to the effects and understand exactly how you want to animate if you want to animate. I'm just gonna make it instant. Boom, 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 boom. Pretty good. And let me just zoom out a little bit, like so. And now what they need to do is just to put in a lot of items in my expanded menu, which is gonna be the repeater. 
if you drag it in from the a libraries panel you're gonna see that you're gonna have one two three I'm gonna go inside and this is where the magic happens because I'll need to start defining content in it I'm gonna go back to my sketch and just pick one item by item so let's see this one and just one copy selection I'm gonna go back to actual paste it in and as you can see that's my item and now this is gonna make it a template and I'm gonna give it a name. So let's see, this is gonna be sport title. And the other one is gonna be sport image, let's see. So I have a clear identifier what is what in, our, in my template. And now look what's gonna happen interestingly. So let's see if I go back to expand it, automatically I'm gonna have three items. And that is because in the repeater I have those data columns, data set columns, if you remember from my previous uh, videos. But here I'm able to specify as many items as I want. So let's say if I add the fourth item, you can see that it reuses the same template. Um, all I need to maybe do is just add a little bit of spacing between the rows so it looks a bit more natural, like so. And you know, you can do anything you want with the repeater. You can make as many items. We only need three items, so I'm gonna delete that row. And here, interestingly, we only need two fields actually so one is our image and another one is our title boom and in an image we can go by one by one and just click import image on that field and just finding those exported images I had before so one is running as you can see I'm gonna then go import an image for another sport and then another and this gives flexibility because I know exactly that, hey, these are different sports and all I need to do is just give it a title as well, cycling, CrossFit, done. But as you can see, it doesn't really pre-populate it yet. Now here's a trick. Once you define your data set like so, you're gonna go in, into interactions and here automatically there's gonna be on item load if you remember from previous videos. If not, that's okay. So you can click on it and as you can see, you have set text functionality and you can say, let's say, repeater sports title, which we defined in a template and you can set it to, let's say value, delete that static value. What we really need is repeater item dot title because we defined the title in our data set and now you can see all the different bits automatically update. And just to show you exactly what I mean, here, you see our title here defined, if I add an X, an image X, so it's custom, I go back, you're gonna see the title X is exactly what we're adding from the data set. And we can do the same for an image as well. So you can say set image, select the template, which is basically that ghost uh, sports image, uh, you know, placeholder. And then you can select value, go to FX again, insert variable, or function and find image X, which we just renamed, if you remember in data set, click OK, and boom, your items are here, they are loaded and they're ready to be used. Um, and if, if we preview, you're gonna see that it's all custom and boom, I have three different items to use in my dropdown. And if I, let's say, want to increase the size of them, all I need to do is either add rows here so, you know, I could define different images. So let's say this could be uh, swimming. Then I could add another one for rowing. And as you can see, I don't have an image yet. But once I start defining these, let's say fencing and um, MMA, we know all those different sports, it keeps on increasing the list. And all I need to do is maybe just change an image for it. Again, click, right click, import an image and then replace it. And it's automatically gonna, you know, render it in my prototype like so, which is pretty cool, right? So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna go ahead and just reuse the same images at random. Even if it don't correspond to actual sport, it doesn't matter because we haven't defined it yet. But what I want to show you is how to make the best out of that situation where your drop down item, which some of you asked actually, like, hey, if I use repeater and they overlap, my thing might look like, you know, it, it, it just overlaps my drop down thing. How can I increase it? Well, it's relatively easy. 
but let, let let me just explain first why you want to do that because imagine that you never know you, you might know exactly how many items you might load but if you add another item you always have to almost readjust the panel which is fine you can do it manually like so and now if i render you're gonna see that it readjusts the panel and if i collapse it readjusts and if i want to display less items i can just delete let's say that last row and just readjust again and and it's okay it's gonna show something right but we can also resize this bit and that's the interesting bit there are several ways to do this but the one i like it is um, i like to force the height of a panel so let's say this is rectangle uh, three so i'm gonna give it a name let's say uh, drop down bg I have this set, so maybe all I need to do is just detect how many things we have. And let me just see how high is my repeater at this very moment. Um, I could even add the background to it, like so. So maybe it's going to be easier to check in exactly what it means, like so, let's say. Oh, let's say every item is going to be spaced like this. Um, and it's 57, so it's one, two, three, four, five items. So I would need to detect exactly how many items there are in my data set. And I'm gonna leave the size of a dropdown on purpose smaller, just to show that it could adjust. I could add a new interaction on my canvas, which is on page load. And here I can do the set size. All I need to do is really just to select my drop down BG, which is that rectangle and increase it. I could do it manually here, if you remember from my previous videos, but I'm gonna do it automatically and a bit more smarter. So I'm gonna go on function, delete that static value. I'm just gonna go ahead and insert the local variable and I'm gonna select widget. I'm gonna select our repeater X, which is our repeater. And here, I'm just gonna go ahead and say LVAR one dot I think it's item count like so. Let me just look up the function visible item count. It could be just that visible item count. As you can see, it pre-filled with some stuff. And then I'm just gonna multiply that by let's say 57, if I remember our height of one single item. And then maybe just even add the 10 pixel margin on top of that. So we have maybe five, six items multiplied by 57, maybe it's 300 pixels or so, plus 10 is gonna be 310 pixels height of a panel. Click OK, and let's see if that does the trick. It does, but it doesn't, it doesn't consider the top aspect of a thing because we have a margin on top of it. So it's my mistake, so let me just look up. Because at the moment I have also this item on top, which is at least 52 and if I expand it up to repeater is 65 and so 60 plus 65 and it's all all math so I'm gonna edit my function and instead of 10 I'm gonna add let's say 75 or so well maybe that's a bit too much but let's add just at least 65 and see if that increases it preview boom it did, it did increase it. And let's say now, just to show you the demo, how it looks like in action, as you can see, it's cut out. And I could even make it even smaller drop down like this for the sake of a demo. And let's say I could add more items to it or less items to it. So let's say maybe it's a new item. Um, I don't know what it could be. Maybe it's uh, fencing again and just import an image and just gonna select running image randomly as you can see. So it increased, now we have instead of five, we have six items. And if I preview and open that drop down, as you can see it adjusted, I could even add more margin if I wish, but it's really up to you. So that's how you make it a more dynamic drop down uh, based on repeaters and then adjust the panel. Now the best use case for this is that, let's say if you have my account edition or you have a product edition where users are able to insert a name, um, add an icon, something like this, click save and add it to a repeater, the underlying box, the underlying division or you know that rectangle with a border is also gonna increase 
if you add that logic. So just go ahead, experiment with it. But you know, if you simply add on page load, set size, select your VAT, drop down background and add a simple function inside the effects panel in Axure, you can just do so much and it's just so dynamic and it's looks awesome in the end because you know it, it's almost like a fully functional product in a way um, and so go experiment with it as per usual if you like this video give a like subscribe to this channel leave a comment down below if you have any questions and as per usual i'll see you next time